This season, one driver stands out from the rest in the NASCAR Cup Series. This weekend, Martinsville will decide his title fate. We're talking about Kyle Larson, and he's is a bad spot right now, and things are only starting to look worse for him this weekend. Homestead Miami Speedway was the miniature version of Kyle Larson's whole season. A quick car, surprising losses, unforced blunders, and incredible comebacks. And it was all for naught. Larson was out of contention for the rest of Sunday's race when a sudden cut tire sent him into the wall. Just when he was making some progress, Chris Boucher's twisted vehicle caused him to come to a halt on pit road. Nobody expected to see him at the front again, but he did make his way back across the field. Closing close on Ryan Blaney for the race lead in the last 15 laps, he attempted to blow the gap up the middle as they lapped Austin Dillon, but spun out. To his credit, Larson saved it and finished third on the track, but a delayed stop to repair the diffuser flap landed him in the middle of the pack. He finished the day in 13th place, the seventh worst playoff driver overall. It just looked bound to go badly for him, and that's been the theme of his year at some of these events. Although no driver has surpassed Larson in laps led this season, and he has twice as many race wins as his closest competitor, there have also been other nearly triumphs that did not materialize. The driver of the number 5 Hendrick Motorsports Chevrolet appears to be repeating the same pattern. Fast vehicle, dominating performance, unfortunate luck, and or unforced error, occasionally followed by a spectacular recovery, but nearly always too little, too late, and this time it could cost him a shot at the title. It's similar to his effort at the double, which was going well until he received a speeding penalty during his final stop at the Indianapolis 500. Despite his disappointment, he boarded a plane and headed for Charlotte, aiming to be the first driver to achieve this task in a decade. He arrived just in time for rain to bring the Coke 600 to an early finish. His season was inconsistent and erratic, which contributed to him losing the regular season crown. Missing the 600 didn't help, but there were plenty of points still on the table after that, and he only lost to Tyler Reddick by one point. Those few additional points may come back to bother him in a few days. But could that actually happen? Is Larson's 2024 title run about to mirror his failed attempt to win at Homestead, his missed opportunity for the regular season title, or his pursuit of the double, which finally slipped through his fingers no matter how hard he tried? Joey Logano and Reddick have surpassed everyone with their amazing round of eight victories, and Larson now enters the last race of the year seven points below the cut line. Yes, he may points race William Byron and possibly proceed that way, but a win is probably required. On the penultimate lap at Homestead, three drivers in what was virtually a must-win situation ran 1-2-3. According to the standings, the three drivers behind Larson will be at the pointy end of the field this weekend. Larson confessed that it's not my best track, and the driver he's pursuing, Byron, is the most recent winner there. Oddly enough, Larson finished second in that race. That may be little consolation. Denny Hamlin has won more races at the Virginia short track than any other active driver, Ryan Blaney has the best average finish, Chase Elliott is always a threat at Martinsville, and all are behind Larson in the standings heading into the round of eight elimination race. It's beginning to seem as if we're meant to see this format ruin the season of yet another driver deserving of competing for the title. But, if we're going to focus on patterns, this year's round of 12 and round of 16 elimination races were won by the same driver, Larson, who dominated both. And even following a disastrous race last weekend, Kyle Larson is proud of what transpired on Sunday at Homestead. To the layperson, that may seem strange given that he spun racing Ryan Blaney for the lead while taking lapper Austin Dillon three wide, but the 2021 Cup Series winner believes he willed himself to have a shot in the first place. Larson had resigned himself to finishing laps down with a vehicle damaged by a flat right rear, which had forced him into the wall and destroyed his rear diffuser toward the conclusion of Stage 1. The vehicle was troublesome for most of the second stage. He drove that car to within a puncher's chance of making it back into the final four. I shouldn't have been battling for the win, Larson said. I know it's hard to tell, but the underbody was destroyed from the flat, so my car was driving terribly until I got against the wall and was risking my car for the next 220 laps. So, yeah, I'm bummed that I went for a gap and spun and lost my shot to win, but at the same point, I'm proud of myself because I stayed mentally in it to put myself in a position to win, and I'm not sure there are a lot of drivers that could have done that. Larson had read online that he should have been more patient than making the move with five laps to go, but he rejected it. It's really easy to look back and say you should have waited a lap or two, Larson said. And that sounds easy, but these cars are so difficult to drive in traffic and get within a car length or two of someone deep into a run. That's as close as I got, and I had to take advantage of that moment. Sure, in hindsight, 
you would have liked to play things differently, and maybe you do get another opportunity, but I couldn't have lived with myself if I was too patient and didn't have time. That's racing. The pride stems from his belief that many of his colleagues would have given up. He is happy that Cliff Daniels and their crew made the automobile drivable enough for him to give it his all. He was proud of their pit crew's systematic approach to obtaining track position. After that flat, we had a worn out underbody, and the run after that, I was sliding all over the track and thought, with all the long runs ahead, I'm probably going to lose a lap or two and finish 28th, Larson said. I was able to find something that crushed my race car enough to find some speed and charge forward from there. So I didn't crash again. I thought with me having an ill handling race car, I would probably crash and DNF and totally be out of it, which I guess almost happened at the end, but I'm glad that was for second and not 25th. I feel like I took a 25th place car, and with the help of my team, pit stop and adjustments, was able to have a great opportunity to win. I was happy with that and still feel like we finished better than we should have. I know that's weird to say, but we did. Larson is currently in uncharted situation, seven points below the elimination cut line heading into the last race of a three-race round. And this time, it's the final round before the championship race. Larson has been eliminated previously, but it generally happens when he starts a race with a points lead and is removed because someone won their way in or he had bad luck. Larson believes the pressure is off this weekend at Martinsville. When you're below the cut, it's less pressure because you can just go constantly push, but we'll see, Larson said. The points will fluctuate a lot during the race based on where your car is. I look forward to the challenge. I think it will be fun to see what we can do. It's a tough track, and it will be nice if we can make it, because we've had to overcome a lot, and I'm proud to still be in the position that we're in. Larson also believes he will need to win the race outright since one of the other six may win, making his points pathway less plausible. I think for me, I'm just going to try to execute my job the best that I can and not make mistakes and keep myself in the hunt," Larson said. I'm confident the pit crew is going to keep us in the hunt, and I don't think there are as many teams that do as good a job as we do with strategy. I think I've got a great team that can execute in all those areas. It's tough because you look at all the guys that are left in the playoffs, the two teams that have the least chance at winning Martinsville have already won in the round of eight, so it comes down to Bell, William, Denny, Chase, and myself. But everyone else left is really good at Martinsville and are probably going to be really good, and one of those six are going to win the race, so it makes it feel like a must win in a lot of ways. It's going to be fun and exciting, and I think the fans are going to be in for a treat because it's going to come down to the end like it always does. Hopefully, we're part of that group fighting for the win and a good points day, and we'll see how it plays out. What are your thoughts? Will Larson move on to the finale next week?